we're here. Uh, thank you guys for for joining us today. Uh, for this sure. is this is forging flame, of course. And today with uh, with Ryan and I, we've got our good friends from the Drink Culture Podcast, Fabian Rodriguez and Jared. I I mostly see your name in print, so I'm not even going to try. Can you drop? Bicco. Bicco. Okay. Bicco. Bicco. Yeah. All right. It's a tough one. I, I don't blame anyone if they can't get it. <laughs> Great. Thank you. I, <laughs> I feel absolved for, for the shame I had earlier. But well, yeah, welcome, guys. Thank yeah. you so much for taking the time to, uh, to podcast on us while we podcast your podcast. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and, and I just want to throw it out there, the now defunct Drink Culture podcast. Yeah, we, were, we, were, we were getting there for sure. We were going to soft shoe it in a little bit. It's definitely a bit of the elephant in the room. I wish the camel lamp was on, on the camera. but uh, That's okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, I listened to the 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 wrapping up podcast of yours, and you described it as a band breaking up. And I think that's a good mm. I think that's a good analogy because while you say it's now defunct, it's still a thing. You guys still have what 174 episodes still live everywhere. So 175, I think. 175. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. So big body of work, of course, all of your social media presence and everything. But well, let's let's to to get into because I definitely want to want to try and get into it rather quickly. Um, but let's let's start with a little bit of bio on the on the two of you. Um, tell us, you know, and whomever might be listening, who you guys are, what drink culture is, how you got there, and and then we'll get to its conclusion. But Fabian, you're, okay. You're, you're the you're the uh, you're the chatty order. Kathy. First, right? yeah, drop it. <laughs> um, hey guys, uh, I'm Fabian Rodriguez. I am the host, co-founder of the Drink Culture Podcast. So we're going to start backwards. That was like the most recent thing. Um, but before that, uh, was that actually? I don't know. My my timeline's all messed up. So <laughs> I guess we'll start at the beginning. That's typically where people start, right? Uh, is the beginning. So grew up outside of Chicago. Uh, went to boarding school. Uh, I went to Culver Military Academy and that might come back into the conversation just depending on how deep we go. But that formed a lot of, of, of a lot of things that, that kind of happened later in life. So I went to Culver, uh, went to Purdue, played in a band at Purdue, had a bunch of random jobs, most of which were delivering for every single pizza place uh, there. That's actually where I met my, my now wife. Um, what was at a pizza place called Mad Mushroom? Uh, played in a band there and, and that kind of started off this entrepreneurial thing that, that I had in me in the, in the creative space. So uh, never had played instruments before, but loved music and said, I want to do anything I can to be able to do that. And so I kind of just weaseled my way in and told people, Hey, you let me in your band. Um, I, I will get us on the road. I'll be your manager. I'll be your booking agent and I'll get us shows. And I, I literally would drag a desktop computer that I spray painted red with a $20 <laughs> keyboard from Walmart and nice. play the laser sound and wind noise. Cause we were like this jazz funk, like electronic band. And, and it was awesome. And I've totally lived up to my end of the bargain. Um, actually started a business there where I was booking different bands to about three or four different venues. So we had like this little entertainment company there. Um, that band broke up in about 2010, moved to Indy with, with my wife, uh, got a job selling used cars, got pulled out of that to go work for Mercedes, worked for Mercedes for seven years, hated my life the last three years. And Jared heard me bitch about it every <laughs> single day for those last three years that I was there. And during that time, we started the Drink Culture podcast. So I sent Jared a text and was like, hey man, do you want to start a podcast? And he said, yes. And we decided to just open up a laptop, started recording at his gym, and it, it kind of snowballed from there. Um, so I ended up leaving that job in 2017, went through a program called Tech Point Sales Bootcamp to try to get into the tech industry, uh, found a job at a company called Perk, worked there for about a year and a half, got some huge opportunities and you know, being able to use some of the, the skills that I had learned from editing the, the podcast to start working with some other companies, uh, left that job in September, created a separate LLC outside of Drink Culture, and have been working with other businesses to help them launch and produce their shows for like the last year and a half. Um, nice. And then we, we had been running Drink Culture for a little over three years, um, to, to your point, about 175 official like numbered episodes with about 10 or so other bonus episodes. But it, I mean, that was Sweet. our, you know, that was our life for, for the last three and a half years. And uh, now 
am just focused on culture collaborative media, which is the editing producing side that, mm-hmm. that I do. And then working on a couple of new shows um, to kind of replace what was the Drink Culture podcast. Okay. And okay, so you mentioned you, you started recording on a laptop at, uh, at the mm-hmm. gym with Jared. Jared, how, how, did you guys, how did you guys meet? Well, here, let's, let's start with your, your bio first, Jared. What's, what's, your, what's your background in Lay it on us. Yeah. Uh-oh. Yeah, so oh, there he is. <laughs> um sorry, let me let me, I didn't let me click over internet's really quick. I don't know why this happened, but I thought maybe the bourbon got you, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> there you guys go. You guys good? Oh yeah. Yes. Yep. We sorry, can, we I don't know why my internet clicked over. I was off my 5G and that's really bad uh, reception down in the basement. So quick bio. Um Born and raised in the region, so Maryville, Indiana, and nice. played soccer my entire life. Got recruited to play Division One soccer at IUPUI. Um, went to IUPUI from 03 to 07. Um, went to Kelly School of Business, uh, management, HR, and uh, international business majors. Um, then, similar to Fabian, traveled around, moved to Chicago right away, and did a bunch of kind of odd, odds and ends jobs. I worked for PlayStation for two and a half years. Traveled around the country, uh, um, demoing PlayStation threes on That's a semi truck, awesome. which was a really cool experience. Hell and, yeah. uh, at the age of 22, 23, 24, it really gets you out of your comfort zone. We did the MLB all-star game, the X games, air shows, all sorts of things. Um, and then in 2011, I actually moved out to the Virgin islands in Whoa. St. Croix and bought a mm. one-way ticket, lived out there with one of my college buddies um, didn't really have a game plan. And at that moment in time, one of my best friends and current business partner with Naptown Fitness, um, Peter Brazvon was in Chicago doing CrossFit and he started talking about this CrossFit thing a lot and, uh, got me interested in it and kicked my butt in a couple workouts and right away, early 2011 caught the bug. Um, and I've always wanted to start a business. I've always wanted to create something. I always felt like I had to create a widget. Um, but I don't really have an engineering mind. I don't really, you know, product development's not my thing. Um, didn't really ever conceptualize the idea that a service is a business sure. um, and producing a quality service and giving something, someone value if they pay for it is, is, is a business. And um, we decided to start a CrossFit gym. We were going to, I moved back to Chicago um, in May of 2011 and we were going to start a CrossFit gym in Chicago uh, learned about cost of square footage, cost of living, um, everything about Chicago being expensive. And that's when we decided like, why don't we use our network from Indianapolis? We spent four and four and a half, four years there. And so we started doing research, taking a mega bus back and forth. And, uh, sure enough in September, actually October 8th, 2011 is when we had our opening day for CrossFit Naptown. Nice. Um, from that point forward, it's evolved into a much bigger business. It's more than just CrossFit. In fact, we're kind of getting away from that terminology now at this point. And uh, it's Naptown Fitness, uh, but we are um, we do have more than that. So we have a kids program. We have a longevity program. We have Practice Indie Yoga, which is a full-time yoga studio. We have Naptown Swift, which is a boot camp class. And then uh, we have our Strength and Fitness, which was formerly our CrossFit class. Um, and then other couple core components to that whole business structure. So within that entity itself, we have about seven, eight different businesses. Um, and to Fabian's point, it was April, 2017. He sent me a text and kind of like, you know, like, Hey, you, you, you want to go out with me type situation? And, <laughs> uh, uh, asked if I wanted to start a podcast with him. And at that point in time, uh, Naptown fitness was kind of, now I wouldn't say on autopilot, but it was running its running itself as a business. And I just was looking sure. for another creative itch. And I said, yes, let's do this. And we started talking to a MacBook and kind of playing that whole uh, hyper local NPR, how I built this and um, focused on that. Once we realized we don't know enough about bourbon and beer, <laughs> and then it turned into eventually turned into the drink culture podcast. And then uh, fast forward three and a half years later to whatever it is now, July of 2020. And a lot has changed and a lot has evolved and our lives specifically have changed. And I think that brought us to, um, I wouldn't say a tipping point, but sure. to a real conversation of where's this going? What are we doing and what's our future? Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where I think we'll dive into some of that yeah. um, coming up. 
Oh, there's – well, there's so much to, to dive into. <laughs> I mean, yeah. especially – well, you know, and, and, and it stands to reason, right? Like every every industry – pretty much globally at this point, you know, has been impacted in some way by what we're dealing with with COVID. And it sounded like, you know, in hearing you guys all all sitting around and talking about it in your kind of your your farewell episode, you know, it sounded it sounded like at least, you know, at least Fabian really hardcore was forced forced to um, reflect as we all kind of have been. And, and especially if you own a business or are doing anything and especially something that's so people and community driven, like, you know, like a podcast like yours was slash is because it's, you know, it's still going to live on and in, in uh, perpetuity as long as you're, you're paying your hosting tab. But, um, but, uh, you know, it, 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 it just makes sense that, that one might come to a conclusion like that when you're forced to, I mean, you know, you've got kids, Jared, Fabian, congratulations. You've got, you've got a little one on the way, right? Thank you. So, yeah. yeah, of course. I mean, it, priorities definitely have to have to be reassessed when you're not certain where, you know, your next meal is coming from, not to over dramatize it. But I mean, that's kind of what what the circumstances are, right? Like maybe not this meal, but maybe 12 weeks from now, you know, like what? <laughs> switch into hamburger helper or something, you know, like what, whatever it takes to, to keep it going. So I, I, I can, te- I can definitely see, you know, where that mindset comes from. But, you know, for those who haven't experienced your podcast before um, and may not have listened to, to the infamous episode 173, what, what was that mindset that you guys were, were ultimately coming to that, that forced you to, to, to change it up? You want to hit on that, Fabian? Sure. Um, you know, you 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 kind of mentioned just being forced to to have um, conversations with with yourself just about like what what is important. And uh, you know, I I am I'm not getting ready to give birth, but my wife is to to our first child. Yeah. And w- once you get news like that, it it automatically switches your your mindset and. I've never understood it when, when people had mentioned it to me, but I completely get it now. Uh, there is just like this primal thing that just goes on with you where I literally think it changes your biology. I think that there's, and this is total bro science, by the way, I, <laughs> never it, but I feel like there is something, some chemical reaction that happens that gets released in your body to where you just start thinking differently and you start acting differently and you start to, you know, as a result of that, you start to prioritize the things that really are important and I think for a while, I had probably, um, obviously, because I, I didn't know that this was coming, but, you know, I, I wasn't 100% honest with how I was feeling about the things that I was doing, right? I was just comfortable playing in this comfortable space of like, you know, during culture, I come to this point to where it's doing pretty well. Um, the, the episodes were automatic. We were booked out for several months in advance and, and we kind of had control over how these conversations were going to go in the product that we were putting out. Um, but you know, that, that, that part where I needed to get very honest with myself and say, do I love this as much as I, I loved it before? And, you know, I started to realize that I, that I really didn't, and, and it wasn't any fault of the people that we were talking to, but I'm the type of person that, that jumps from thing to thing, um, quite often, right? Like I sure. get really bored really easily. So <laughs> I'm, I'm honestly shocked that I stuck with this for as long as I did. Um, and, and I'm not, not even kidding, but I just, I love new things. So, you know, part of it was, Hey, I need to prioritize my, my time. Uh, part of it was, Hey, I'm getting bored. So that's not being fair to my partners in this business and the people that we're interviewing, because, you know, this is a very serious thing that, that we we're, we're doing and we have a responsibility to tell these stories. If we're going to call ourselves the official podcast of, of anything, right. right? Like there's some authority there, whether it's self-imposed or not. Um, but it was just a culmination of, of a lot of those things. And, and then also realizing and, and being introspective of like, where are, you know, what, what are the areas that we have friction in? And, and that's a lot of like the, the managerial side of things. And I'd never managed people before. So as a CEO, as a leader, I thought I wasn't doing a great job. And I knew that my communication was going to, you know, get worse before it got any better uh, come November. So you know, uh, it, it was a, a mix of all those things that just said, let's, let's end this now. 
right? Let's, let's have some conversations about it. Um, but, but ultimately like, let's, let's bring this thing to a close and, and, you know, allow myself some time to kind of breathe and figure out what I want to do next. Sure. Yeah. And I also want to mention that um, Haley Brown is a, a partner of ours or was a partner of ours on, on the project. She joined us in uh, Feb- or February, 2018, December. Was it December? 2017. She joined like yeah, that's right. six or seven months after we started. Gotcha. Wow. Um, so, I mean, there was certainly some dynamics to this. And, you know, she jumped in as a, just had graduated from Butler University and messaged us on Instagram saying, hey, you guys are doing exactly what I want to do. Um, can I help you? And then kind of was an apprentice for a couple of months. And we're finally like, well, we're trying to take this as far as we want to take it, which, um, you know, we wanted to take drink culture podcast to communities across the country and allow communities to tell their stories, hyper local stories of those movers and shakers and community leaders within their own small communities and let drink culture kind of take it uh, that route, you know, uh, similar to a, uh, you know, a creative mornings or some of those uh, different projects that allow people to share within their communities. Um, And honestly, part of what Fabian said was we just, didn't have the time, all of us together. Uh, you know, we yeah. all have full-time jobs. We all have other commitments outside of it. And as much as we could, you know, I'm a visionary when it comes to businesses. Like I think I, I go with the gut. I don't go with ROI and data and analytics. I just like, it feels good. So I'm going with it. True. And uh, you know, like it felt good to try to take this to another step or another level, other communities, but time was a factor. Yeah. And um, you know, making priority for, you know, our, my child was, became a huge factor. And so Fabian jokes all the time. Like I've probably over the last three and a half years have texted him or called him, I don't know, a dozen times, two dozen times and said, I'm done, dude, I quit. And he's like, no, 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 you're not, you're not. Uh, So, you know, he jokes with me all the time about how, how many times I've given up on the project. And just because, you know, these ebbs and flows of like, you know, it's scratching that creative itch. Great. I love it. You know, like I'm, you know, talking to someone I really want to talk to and like all these highs are got you up. And all of a sudden it's like life takes a turn and you're really busy. It's like, I don't have time for this. I don't have time for this. And so, you know, just, it finally kind of came to a culmination where, especially during quarantine and after quarantine, where we're just like, man, I think it's time to move on. And, you know, a a lot of that decision was spearheaded by Fabian, but I think as a team, we all kind of felt that and, and, and it just, it it naturally made its way. I mean, there's no way, you know, especially when, because you guys very much have a, a tight knit team dynamic. And, and I think I met, I met Haley for the first time when you guys had your, what was it? Season one kind of like, rap party like guest mm-hmm. thank you yeah. party oh, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah one year a, anniversary that was a good time i a, a little bit of backstory i know you guys because i was an, an early guest i had just launched my my port cracklins company hens pig chips and things were going bonkers real quick and you guys were were super generous and in, in having me on and, and kind of giving me a a platform and you know you guys were still doing tastings and stuff at that time what, what were we drinking bourbon is that what it was Probably. Oh, yeah. 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 But um, I see you smiling, Jared. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just thinking of his, his pig chips right now. Those yeah. things are delicious. Yeah. Yeah, Rest in peace. Yeah. <laughs> go, go in the way of drink culture. Eh? Sad. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, no, I'm meeting her. And I, I think that was what maybe was that wintertime. When did you mm-hmm. guys have that or spring? I think it was actually July of yeah. 2018 that oh, we wow. had. It was at eighth, eighth Day Distillery. Is that correct? Yeah, that's right. Yep. That's right. Well, I mean, so she she definitely seemed like she was deeply entrenched with you guys, and you guys yeah. seemed to be a, a, a tight group. And then listening to you guys all talk with uh, with some of the other crew members that you have on board, um, you know, it you know that team dynamic. It, it's hard, I think, for people not to kind of get a sense that something like that is coming or at least all be on some similar wavelength of the, of the same sort of thing. Yeah. But you know, it's un, it's unfortunate for sure, but it absolutely sounds like, you know, hearing you talk about it, it sounds like it's, it's probably going to be the best possible thing, you know, for, for probably all of you in some capacity. Right. Oh yeah. And you know, I, if, if I thought any other way, right. Like if the Jared had, had stepped up 
and and I'm just throwing out hypotheticals, Jared. So like, I'm not trying to offend anybody, but like if, if anybody had stepped up and like been a little bit more passionate or had like tried to take the charge on something, then that maybe could have tipped something a little bit more, but it's just like, it, it kind of reinforced the fact that what I'm feeling is correct. Right. And we, and we had several, I mean, Jared and I talk all the time and I probably had 10 conversations just as many times as Jared has tried to quit. I had the same <laughs> amount of times of conversations with Jared saying, Hey dude, I think I want, I, I want this to come to an end. And, you know, shout out to Jared for always pushing me to, to sleep on it or give it two weeks or write things down and be like, give me the reasons why you don't think that, you know, you want to continue to do this. And, you know, I really haven't thought about that until now. So it kind of makes me happy that, yeah. that Jared did that. Um, but blushing yeah. right now for those who can't see, <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, but to that other point, there really wasn't that, that push from everybody. Right. And so like, as I'm having those internal conversations, I'm starting to think about that as well. Right. Like if I'm not the one that's going to push this forward, is there anybody else that's going to step up and do it? And it, it came down to Haley's super busy. Jared is super busy. They're both really successful with what they do. Yeah. Um, yeah. And it's just like, nobody else has the time to make this a full-time thing. And even myself, I didn't have time to make this a full-time thing, right? Because it wasn't bringing in money and I have a baby on the way. So it's right. just like, I'm focusing on the things that do bring in money. So it, it you know, I, I don't know where I was going with that, but yeah, you know, take, take what I just said for what it's worth. <laughs> well, Ryan, uh, I, I want you to promise me that throughout this entire podcasting experience, that you'll always be as open and communicative with me about where you're at and where you stand as, <laughs> as Jared and Fabian were with each other. I promise. And I, promise. And I wanted to jump in there. Uh, I actually looked this up today cause I was curious for myself, but I looked up our 2019 tax returns and um, it did make money. And that's nice. the crazy part about it all was the fact that like we created this as a business in LLC back in 2017 between mm -hmm. Uh, Fabian and I, when we first started, we had a bank account and everything. And it's, I mean, we each threw in, I think what we each threw in a thousand dollars when we first started. And we're just like, okay, let's buy some equipment. Let's do what we need to do and make this happen. And I mean, in 2019 alone, we had revenue over $18,000. Wow. So like, nice. I mean, that's, what's crazy about this whole thing is like, this became something and like Fabian, I think is too hard on himself and talks yeah. about this being, a, being a failure. Fail <laughs> I can't, can't say that word very well. It, it, it failing. And I don't think it failed. I think we just decided that we need to move on to something different and, and make a change. Um, because to me, the fact that we were able to, people paid us $18,000 in 2019 uh, to either right. sponsor, run events, whatever the case may be, live events. Um, to me, anyone who get, makes a dollar from running a business, if, you, if someone pays you a dollar for a service or for a product, you're successful because right. you're able to create value for someone. So like, to me, that's a huge success. Um, and, uh, you know, like I think it could become or could have become a lifestyle business for one person, but it couldn't do that for three people. Right. And that was another piece to the puzzle as well, where, um, you know, if, if we broke down, no one ever made money from this because we ended up spending all that money sure. on different pieces and different things as well. I mean, for the first two years, every single time we visited a venue, it wasn't like they were like, hey, here's, here's all of our drinks and here's this. I remember having a $170 bill one night um, that we featured a place and they gave us a $170 bill and just like, oh, okay. <laughs> like, I thought we just gave you a bunch of free, yeah. ad, free marketing and free advertising and yelled your name on a thousand times. And um, mm. so, yeah, anyways, it's again, I, I'm going on a thousand tangents as well. So yeah. I apologize. But, but yeah, I mean, it, it was successful. Yeah. Well, I guess my point. <laughs> I mean, but uh, I mean, th that's, that seems to be kind of contrary to, to what Fabian talked about as being the reason for failure. Fabian, do you want to, you want to dig into that? Like, why do you feel like it was a failure? Um, you know, part of it has to do with us having these really, um, goals. like, yeah, we, we had big goals just in terms of download numbers in terms of like, how much share of ear, right? If you want to use a podcast term, how much share of ear do we have here locally, right? And I think the number that we always harped on was like this 1%, like how the hell can we not get 1% of people to give a shit about Indianapolis, right? Like this whole thing, yeah, we want to make money, but at the end of the day, like this is one of the biggest struggles that we had was Jared 
had this business mindset and I came at it from like this really altruistic mindset, which I think worked uh, to an extent, but at, at the same time, there was always this, this kind of friction be, between it. Um, but you know, the fact that we didn't grow and, and this isn't like a vanity thing because I don't care if people are listening to, to me talk on, on stuff, but like, it really was this altruistic thing where all we wanted to do was put the city on our back, lift it up and like celebrate the people yeah. that make cool yeah. shit happen here. And it's like, how do we not get 10,000 people to listen every week? Right? Like these are the people in your community. And especially at a time like this, when local business is fucking struggling to, to keep your doors open, the thing that's going to get you to go buy some shit from somebody is like knowing who they are, like getting yeah. deep down yeah. and personal into like, man, I know this person has two kids. I knew one of them was sick, like blah, 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 whatever the case may be. But like we were doing this for Indy. Like we weren't doing this really for ourselves, right? So not being able to get those numbers to then turn it into a business is really where it's just like, man, that, that, that didn't work out or, you know, not being able to scale and go to other cities because we really thought that we had something there. Um, so like that type of stuff makes me think like, yeah, we didn't accomplish that goal. Sure, right. Sure. And, and failure is not bad. I think everybody's written enough books or seen enough memes on Instagram to know that failure isn't a bad <laughs> thing. Right? It just has a negative connotation. Um, I learned a lot out of the things that I think were, were failures and the things that I'm taking into the business that I'm doing now with culture collaborative media and there are things that I'm going to carry over once we start new shows. Um, so, I mean, take it, you know, take failure for, for what you think it is, but you know, I don't, I don't think it's all bad. Sure. Um, there's sure. a lot of learning to, to be done out, out of failure and you know, a lot of successful people have failed at stuff before they became like really, really, really successful. So. Well, I, I, I want to, I want to say, well, for one, I'm, I'm glad that you that you're viewing what you perceive as failure to be a further opportunity for growth. I mean, that's that's great. That's definitely, you know, I think inarguably like a healthy place to be with it. But I would say just to provide you with hopefully at least a little bit of validation, um, you definitely didn't fail. Uh, I mean, you might not have hit certain goals that you had yourself set. And, right. And and I know that that like setting big goals is kind of a critical thing to do if you're really trying to get after some shit. Like you need to you need to really be getting after something. Otherwise, you're just kind of slowly walking up a very mild hill, right? And that's, I mean, that's fine. Eventually, you can get to some pretty great places by doing that. But, you know, that's not changing the world in any sort of a meaningful way with any immediacy. Mm -hmm. But what you guys did is you absolutely did elevate Indianapolis. I think that the platform that you created for, especially in looking back at kind of the breadth of, of the types of guests that you had, what you eventually wound up with, you know, you went from, from something that was mostly pretty industry focused, food mm -hmm. and bev uh, industry. If you're not in the industry, you might hear industry and not know what I mean, but you went from something that was pretty, you know, geared towards food and beverage to something that was way more meaningful than that overall. Right. And, you know, while you might not have been able to, like, jump that boundary of, of leaving Naptown, so to speak, uh, I mean, you know, you, you definitely made a, a, a pretty big splash. And, I mean, when, when looking at it, right, we've got, what, close to a million people in Indy overall. What's, do you guys know what the population numbers are for Indianapolis? Just over, ju just over 900,000 is okay. the technical terms these days. And you were shooting for 10,000 downloads an episode, right? Yeah. So about 9,000, 10,000 people is what we, like, what our first goal was. That was, that was that magic, like 1%. And Correct. you wound up with an average of over 700, I think I heard you say. Yeah. I think it was like 780 was our average. I mean, so I, I can't do percentages, but 0.01%, 0.1%. Sure. Well, re realistically <laughs> speaking, from where, like, from where I said, at least, you guys mostly focused on, on like the entrepreneurial side of things, uh, you know, businesses that were popping up, people that were doing things that were related to community. I mean, I, I think that, I think that getting a, a, like a per episode download average like that is actually really impressive. And I know that, you know, Ryan and I are just getting started out. So like all we see is just like a long, slow uphill climb, but I mean, putting, keeping things in perspective, going after it for, for three years, I think that that's actually very commendable and you shouldn't, you shouldn't feel 
bad about that at all. Like, hopefully you can take away a whole lot of pride over it. And, and it's not that I feel bad, but I think I can speak for Jared and I both. Like I'm very competitive, right? And, uh, <laughs> yeah. So uh, I'm more, I'm more competitive than he is. <laughs> so I, I think that that plays into a, a lot of that, you know, and sure. what, the more I think about it and, and it's cool to step away from something and have some opportunities to, to reflect on it. But I start to think about like, and this isn't always evident in, in the moment, but what we were trying to do uh, is make something not sexy, sexy, right? By branding it. And and I think that that's what was always so cool about this drink culture brand and, and just kind of like that name is, yeah, it was confusing. Um, <laughs> but if you, you kind of paid attention, you, you listened to the episodes, you, you got to feel for what that double, double entendre really was about, right? Like right. drinking and culture. And we were trying to take this like, okay, great. Like maybe people don't want to hear stories from local people in the community, but we were trying to make it sexy. Right. And that's like a very hard sell sometimes. Yeah. It's, it's a, it's a hard thing, right. Trying to balance giving someone a platform who may or may not want to sell people in the community, something or like promote something that they're doing and like also trying to legitimately promote community. Right. There's, there's always got to be some give and take, especially if you're trying to deliver on, you know, hopefully making other people some money. So you can yourselves hopefully make some money. Right. It's, a, it's a lot. It's a lot to, a lot to juggle, a lot to worry about. Yeah. I always go back to, um, gosh, it's probably 2017. One of our mentors, um, really well known here in Indianapolis and the community's built multi million dollar, even a billion dollar business. But he told us, he's like, I, I think love what you guys are doing, but I have no idea how you're going to make money. And that's kind of like what he left Fabian and I with. Sure. I remember walking out of his office and Fabian and I being like, that was awesome. But at the same time, <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. So <laughs> stop now or should we keep going? And, and we kept going and um, learned a lot and met, I, I think ultimately for, for myself personally, I think Fabian the same way, Haley, every person that was on involved with drink culture, it's, it's the people, right? It's the people we met, um, the networks we've developed, the, con the connections we've developed and, and how that's spilling over into my day day job with Naptown Fitness and right. and different areas of my life has been it's been transformational for me and it's mm. uh, something I certainly will never forget. And Drink Culture will always the Drink Culture podcast itself of what it was for three and a half years will always sit with me very deeply. You can even see it in my uh, in the video here in the back it's or right right back there the, in the uh, background. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the logo sitting in a framed in my whiskey room here in the basement. So it's always going to be here with me. Nice. Yeah, that, that thought actually occurred to me that in a lot of ways, this is really a huge success for you guys in the sense that like you aren't the same person, you aren't the same people that you were three years ago. I'm already feeling it. This is our seventh episode in. I'm already feeling it substantially that it's it's making me stretch and grow in ways totally. that I did not anticipate. Like that very first, uh, we released five episodes at once, which was a, a bit insane. <laughs> Ryan almost um, died. I almost died. But uh, after that, having to listen to every single one of them and having to edit it myself, I'm basically running the production side of things. I learned a lot about my vocal delivery and – Oh gosh, I say um and you know a lot and that's a, a pretty normal thing and, and I'm learning to kind of step back and slow down, little things like that. So I, I can only imagine that over the course of three years that this has caused you guys to grow a lot as human beings. W would you agree with that? Yeah, I know personally for myself, I consider myself an introvert um, and I was the individual who always went to networking events and kind of stood in the corner by myself, staring at people rather Same. than going up to them and be like, Hey, what's up? What are you doing? Um, and you know, within three and a half years, it's, it's in those situations specifically has made me more of an extrovert and has allowed me to meet more people. And to your point, Ryan, like I feel comfortable now going up to people and having conversations and uh, focusing on, um, uh, my, um, uh, speaking abilities and, you know, getting rid of the ums and getting rid of the O's. And so, yeah, it's, it's, tr it's transformed me as, as a professional um, in so many ways, which I wasn't expecting at all. Cause I thought we were just talking about bourbon and beer. Yeah. And you know, <laughs> right. the, these type of things, they have those, uh, you know, eventual life cycles too. Um, Nick and I, not, not to throw it off on a totally different tangent here, but uh, Nick and I, uh, we've known each other for what, 
15, 16 years yeah, now. Something like that. And uh, we collaborated on a project in 2016, and we got some investors to help us uh, basically create an app for pr- Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. And I mean, I, I've, uh, I went to school for media arts and science at IUPUI, so I have an idea of how to produce something like this, but we really had no idea what we were doing. And we, we went in there and immediately burned through that entire lump sum of money and got ripped off by some, somebody on, uh, what, what was it? Uh, Upwork? Upwork, yeah. Upwork, yeah. I don't want to say what country he's from to disparage anybody from that country, but uh, yeah, this, this particular guy was an asshole. Uh, <laughs> but um, anyway, it, it just dragged on until I want to say about what was it six months ago that I finally pulled the plug on it. Yeah. Oh yeah. wow. Yeah, and it went on and on, and I redesigned it. I, I'm the type of person that I view every situation as an opportunity. So when that happened, I'm like, okay, we're out of money. Uh, where's the opportunity here? So I ended up redesigning it, something even more simple and something better. And then I found a new, um, I found a new. Uh, uh, Developer. developer. Yes, that's the word I was looking for. Found a new developer, but still still just kind of hit the same kind of point where it just wasn't getting to where I wanted it to be. And then one day I was just looking at it and looking at the current build. And I'm like, this is shit. I would rather use paper. This is stupid. Like, yeah. what the fuck are we doing? So I, I it, you eventually get to that sunk cost fallacy, you know, where you think that, oh, I just need to invest more. I need to put more time into it. I need to put more money into it. I'm like, is this a sunk cost fallacy? Is this what's happening now? Do, do we just, or do we just stop and look for other opportunities? And I think the decision to stop, which you know inevitably happens in a lot of creative creative endeavors, um, led to different opportunities, such as this one right here of us starting this podcast. So um, I can definitely empathize with the sentiment of, you know, that, that kind of bitterness that comes with it, you know, like, cause I've, I've been in a few different bands as well and kind of hitting that end point there. It's, it's rough. It's not, it's, it's not fun. It's, you know, it's, uh, I forgot where I was going with that. Yeah, Nick, well, help, help me out yeah, here. Come well, on. I mean, so there, I think that there's a lot of, of power and a lot of value in knowing when to wrap it up, right? Yes, because um, yeah, I, I like the I like the term being pot committed because I used to be a degenerate poker player. Me too. And, <laughs> hell yeah! I'm still. I'm, I'm still. Here, I'm give you, let me give you the, this. Got the, got the, got the knuckle tattoos. There. Oh wow, you really got it. Oh tattoos. yeah. Oh yeah. I was like, oh maybe this will intimidate people at the table. Playing some you know? pot, pot lemon Omaha these days. That's my oh, game. I've, I've see. I'm out of practice. I would hate to sit back at a poker table, but. But I kind of want to, you know. Anyway, but but yeah, I mean, uh, eventually you gotta you gotta know when to fold them, so to speak. Yeah. Yep. And that's that's powerful. So more more people, I think, could benefit from hearing a discussion about this topic than than probably realize it. Mm-hmm. I just had some very good friends of mine, and I don't. I don't want to blow them up because I don't, you know, and it's kind of a sensitive uh, discussion, but they had, um, they had a, I don't even necessarily want to be too specific about their business just because it's so niche. Um, But they, they owned a a couple of float tank centers in town and definitely as a result of, you know, COVID quarantine and everything shutting down, that was really just kind of the, 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 I don't know, the thing that finally flipped the switch, but they were on their way to, to shutting their doors for a really long time. And truth be told, if they'd have done it, you know, 12 full months before they did, I think that a ton of heartache and struggle and stress would have been, would have been spared. But, you know, it's, it's hard to, it's hard to kill your babies, you know? Yeah. Well, I think one of the main points there really is, I mean, one of our, our favorite books here, I am like Fabian, our favorite book, but uh, essentialism, Aww, you guys, um, right. I mean, essentialism was a game changer for me, uh, Greg McCown, um, right. Is that Greg McCown? Yeah. Um, but like, you know, the concept behind, you can only be focused, hyper-focused on so many projects and so many things. And that's where for me, it started just becoming ridiculous. There was about a year probably a 16 month span where I just tried to take on everything and meet everyone and do everything. And a lot of it was cause I knew I was having a child and it was just like, I was drowning. And now it's like, I'm hyper-focused on, you know, three things and two things right now, personally, 
like I'm trying to learn Spanish right now and I'm, and I'm, we're, nice. we're building out an EOS within Naptown, which is a, an operating system of running our business. And it's like, those are my two things right now, hyper-focused and I'm excelling further along on both of those things right now, because those are my two things I'm worried about. Everything else I'm like off my plate, someone else do. And it's been a breath of fresh air going this route. And I think Fabian's, whether he knows it or not, is seeing the same thing with his businesses or his business and um, as well as other things in his life. So it's just, it's just focus, 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 focus. Well, mm-hmm. not to not to steal your your oxygen after after getting that breath of fresh air, because I'm sure it's you know definitely a bit of a weight off your back to let go of let go of a project that potentially mm-hmm. causes some stress and sucks up time. But what, I mean, is there any if you guys look back just at the at the drink culture timeline, is there any pivotal moment where you could have made a different decision that would that would have not led you to to making this decision now? Like any, any, I, I kind of want to hear both of your guys' perspectives on this, like sure. any one or two things that were, you know, a decision mismade or pivotal moment. I've got one. I don't want to steal this from yeah, you. Yeah, no, no, go ahead. But like, I mean, for me, the reason that I, I said yes to drink culture was because I didn't have a child and because Naptown was essentially running itself and doing pretty well at that moment in time in 2017. Yeah. And I was looking for something else. And then fast forward, you know, May, 2019, but even, even prior to that, um, Naptown was expanding. There's more going on. There was more need for me to kind of get back involved, um, to do a little bit more. And that was pulling me away from drink culture because I was getting refocused on working on Naptown fitness business. Yeah. And so that's specifically for me, if, if that hadn't happened, I didn't get pulled back in or I didn't have my daughter in 2019, like, I would have, I think my goal, my focus in life would have been uh, scaling this to other cities. Cause that ultimately was my passion. That was, that ultimately was what I wanted to do with this was let's prove the model here in Indianapolis, create a little MVP, minimal viable product here in Indy, which I think we did. We didn't reach the numbers we wanted to, but we proved that people care and the brand was there. Yeah. And then I wanted to take it to Cincinnati or Louisville or Columbus and we actually uh, pitched it to a couple of people in Cincinnati who were hundred percent in on being hosts. We just never went to the lengths or the next step of actually going there, teaching them or, or co-hosting with them and kind of giving them the, uh, the ability to do this. And so we never pulled the trigger and we almost did a, something similar where we were going to fly Fabian and I out to Denver and load up 12 businesses in four days and do 12 weeks of episodes on Denver, but then it's like, why are we talking to people in Denver when we're not even bought into that community? You know what I mean? So, um, but yeah, you know, for me, if we would have, if I would have been more focused and understood essentialism more at that time and tried to scale this to other cities and had the time to do that, I, for me, I would still be in on that. Like, that's kind of one of my, that's probably my biggest regret of stopping this is that we didn't at least give it a really good, uh, college try of, uh, you know, scaling this to different cities across the country. No, do do you feel like, do you feel like you would have been in some capacity? I don't know. What's the phrasing I want to use here in. Okay. If you would have made that jump, right. And let's say you, you, you crunched out 12 episodes and you do, you know, what, three months on Denver. Do you, do you feel like you would have been sliding your own community in some capacity? Like where's the. To an extent, um, my perfect world model would have been to find and train hosts in those cities who are as bought into their own communities. Like a franchise model. Correct. Yes. Um, Affiliate model. It's kind of how CrossFit developed its system and, you know, have someone pay, you know, 500 bucks to access our name of drink culture. We give them our branding kit and we give them guidelines and say, this is what we want you to do. But then right away comes in, well, how do we do quality control? What if someone rubs our name through dirt and all of a sudden like we lose everything because one city destroyed it. And what if we, we hire one co-host to be in uh, St. Louis, Missouri, and they're terrible and they suck and we need to fire them like, and, but there's someone else who's better. How do we fire that person and bring someone else? In? You know what I mean? Like right. there's multiple dynamics to scaling. This is which was part of the problem as well. Why we yeah. never did it. Cause we didn't have the time to solve these problems we're going over right now. Mm-hmm. 
Time time is definitely an enemy in this regard. It sucks, man. What about you? But Fabian? I like those challenges. <laughs> um, you know, off oftentimes I don't ever think that you can look back and, and there, you know, and, and sometimes there are, but I, I think often more often than not, uh, it's never really one pivotal thing, right? It's, it's a series of things that kind of lead up to something. Right. And when you look back at it over the, the, you know, you know, 30,000 feet above the air, all those tiny little dots look like one big dot, right? So sure. it turns out yeah. to be a pivotal thing, but I think that it's a series of kind of small decisions that, that get made. And, um, you know, I, I think that to to an extent, maybe we stuck to our guns um, a little bit too much in some of the decisions that we did make, whether that was uh, us refusing to do anything that wasn't in person because we thought that it was going to take away from the show or refusing to iterate on our format and saying our show is a long format show and that's what it's going to be or refusing to, to edit any, anything that we did or choosing not to interview people really from outside of the community and, and looking to expand that way. So, um, you know, or even that, you know, to, to include vowels in the name that I think that that took us probably longer than I wanted to admit, but I can do it now <laughs> because we don't have it anymore. Um, but you know, it's these series of things that had we gone left when we went right, you know, or zigged when we should have zagged, um, things could have been com completely different. And I think that there was a lot of ideas that we never executed on that could have been really great ideas, but to go back to this thing of like people not having enough time. It's just like, there's, there's only so much that you can fit into a day, yeah. you know, w without taking away from, you know, your relationships uh, at home or the other job that's actually paying your salary or having a life outside of those, you know, two, two things. So uh, again, I don't think that there was one pivotal thing, but I think that we were very stuck on, and maybe this is just me. So I'll just speak for myself. I, I think that I was very stuck on, I know what drink culture is. I know what this brand is and I'm making those decisions based on that vision. Um, uh, so, so I think that had to do with it, but you know, look at it on the other side, I could have been three feet from gold and you know, six months from now, this thing could have blown up because of those decisions. So who, who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Well, I mean, I, I guess one, one other, <laughs> great thing about the the infinite potential of the universe right is the fact that you've still got all of your all of your content banked you've still got all of your ip you know and branding and and everything you've still got your name you know maybe maybe two years from now you guys decide to to rekindle the old flame so to speak you know <laughs> i mean the, who's to say that you can't do that even though you know even though you've said you know we are done doing this who's to say that if if you don't see a, another pathway that just illuminates itself to you and you mm -hmm. find yourself getting fired up again like you know who who knows you know right, but nick, also nick you just nick you just fired me up man i got I just got a delivery <laughs> got a delivery of cigars delivered yeah. today. uh and you know I, i'm a huge fan of michael jordan and uh you know Michael Jordan came out of retirement and in his documentary, <laughs> the last dance smoking cigars. So Fabian, I don't know, maybe a couple of years from now we do, you know, come out of I retirement. Mean, we own the trademark, which is sure. kind of really, really cool that yeah. we own the trademark I mean, we, of drink culture. So. Again, we, yeah, we created the platforms there. Right. I mean, yeah. like it's, and it's, it's established. So. Yeah. But it sounds like uh, in the meantime, there's going to be a lot of, a lot of child rearing going on on both sides of that equation, right? Maybe, maybe our kids become the hosts of the Drink Culture podcast, and then they Nobody interview. Would listen to that shit, and then they interview other kid entrepreneurs in Indianapolis, dude. I, here, business idea. I love it. I'm, I'll, I'll go ahead and sneak He's in a quick plug. Game. He's I, waiting seven to ten years. I do. I, I play the long game. That's what's what up. We're we're doing some long game playing ourselves, but I actually I do have a podcast with my oldest daughter, and only her friends care to listen to it. But it's a pretty fun time. That's that, awesome. that's, that's one of the biggest things that inspired the birth of this podcast. Is um, this podcast we're we're kind of exploring the creative process with with creatives of all types, with entrepreneurs, with artists, with musicians. Anybody that's creating something from nothing, I'm very interested in hearing their process. And yeah. I've been really intrigued by it for a while because I myself, I'm primarily a musician. Like if I wanted to say right down in my core and I've been dealing with my own process for a while. But as uh, as soon as he started that podcast with his daughter, and he knows, 
I mean, not to, you know, knock him down, but he doesn't know, <laughs> he doesn't know much about production and stuff. Yeah. And he got in there and he figured it out. Yeah. And, and I'm thinking, wow, like if he can do it, like we can, we can do something. And then figured out that we would be good co-hosts in this, uh, in this little venture here. Yeah. But, um, you know, it's, uh, man, there was something else I wanted to touch on. <laughs> I'm running, I'm hitting brick walls right here, uh-huh. but, uh, you know. That takes well, time, by the way. Oh, yeah. I, I ran a lot of brick walls in the first couple episodes. In nice. fact, I think we threw out our first eight episodes. We never even released oh. them. We just threw them in the garbage and then apologized. To, it was mostly <laughs> our, it was mostly our friends. So we could totally good. release those episodes now. Oh, you <laughs> Kyle, really Kyle Good, the Kyle Goodberlet episode pulled yeah. out of the archives. See, so look, you're 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 done. You're wrapped up, but you still got another eight weeks of content you could release. I love that's it. True. Oh, you should see how much the we lost have. Tapes. <laughs> Holy shit, we have probably 60 hours of video that we've oh, never wow. even put out there. And we have so many so that I thought it was really important for us to, and Jared did too. I think this is a mutual decision of like, let's record the last thing. Like we didn't really plan a lot of what was going to be said on that last episode. Yeah. Um, it was just going to be, let's turn on the recorder and let's just have this conversation that we're going to have anyway over a beer. Let's have it with the microphones on. But we did that six or seven times and i think that if if i took the time to edit it maybe maybe i still will but you can create the story um from like these super high points where we had the whole team in the room and we're ready to take over the world um to where you start and i don't like things falling apart seems pretty dramatic but like you can start to hear things falling apart right and and you've got this narrative where where it starts really high to where it kind of gets really low and and then you end up at that last episode that we we put out but like i was always intrigued by recording everything as often as possible mm, yeah are you talking about our, our, our vulnerability episodes specifically no, beyond that like all those team meetings were recorded by either oh yeah time. i forgot about that we always I mean, like hey, things guys, got weird things got weird in there we're going live. <laughs> i forgot about we that I sense, uh, I sense a documentary in the future. Uh-oh. Yeah, right. Dude, should... I wanted nothing more. <laughs> I, I mean, there again, like then that's part of the reason why I wanted to to get you guys here. I feel like there's a lot of potential power in in sharing your story. You know, lumps and all. I think again, I think that it's a, a great and powerful thing to know when to hang it up, but also mm-hmm. you know to to look for, look for potential opportunities around, you know, like that, that perspective sharing that's invaluable. Yeah. We're, we're doing a similar thing too with, uh, vlogging. So we're, we're vlogging very frequently because the idea is that we're just kind of documenting the process so that anybody else is starting a podcast and don't really know what the fuck they're doing. Like we do, (laughs) uh, they can maybe like see us like mess up and see our mistakes and things that we've learned and things that we're figuring out. And, um, you know, going going from there. We call them flogs, by the way, because forging flame vlog is a mouthful. So we we just flog it. Yeah, it's a little it's a little bit easier to say. Yeah, that's a t shirt. Yes, <laughs> get flogged. <laughs> nice. Well, and and there's definitely, I'm you know, like I said, I think a lot of a lot of power there. But there were also some pretty self serving motivations in asking you guys here, right? Because like Ryan said, our primary thing is to examine creative process and as fledgling podcasters who better to to ask about process than other podcasters right and and look for look for opportunities to gain knowledge that we don't yet have so i mean what 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 did that process look like in mapping out an episode and trying to find a guest i know that you know it was pretty pretty flying by the seat of your pants early on i'm sure right but but once you developed a process, what did what did that kind of look like functionally? A lot of email. <laughs> yeah. it, it evolved a lot. Um, man, yeah. I mean, I think the biggest headache was logistically up front. Uh, was just trying to figure out, like, who are we going to have? Who's the guest? Where are we going to record with them? Because we didn't have a studio. Uh, then came the idea of, okay, well, let's focus on highlighting a guest, but let's also focus on a, a facility or a place, a location, a brewery, a bar, a restaurant, and then kind of like double dip. So we're focusing on a guest, but also focusing on a space. Perfect world is if they had their own space, we can do two, you know, knock it out at the same time. Also, how do we get drinks involved? Uh, do they drink? That got awkward when we found out people didn't drink. So then it turned into, you know, just <laughs> drinking 
juices and sodas and which was fine too because Fabian went on fast left and right and non-alcoholic mm-hmm. um, uh, uh, challenges left and right. Um, yeah, emails, emails and emails, like believe it or not, just became stressful. And that was, I think, one of your biggest headaches, Fabian. And try to systemize as much as we can where we finally created a Calendly and then just pretty much sent them. We finally said like Thursdays, we're blocking off in our calendar from this time to this time. And we would send guests three months of open invitations on Calendly and say like, you select one of these dates. If it doesn't work for you, reach back out to us. And that way we knew from just an example, like 6 p.m. to 9 p.m. on a Thursday, we blocked off his drink culture recording time. And we knew that's when we were committing to. And every once in a while, we'd have to go out outside of that. And um, I think the challenge for me personally on the whole venture became when people started telling us, who we had mm. to have on as guests no. and creating which we took you know first we took just like anyone else would be like like man we're getting attacked by people like we're you know we didn't realize it but there's a point where we had 13 white males on in a row and that's three and you know three months in a week of of white males telling their story and it's like well that's not who indianapolis is so we needed to be called out on that we needed sure. that but at the same time, it was like, okay, cool. Like that. Thank you for doing that. Now we have to figure out the criteria. And so we built out like a five um, bullet point list of like, these are the criteria we're looking for, for future guests. But then you'd have people who would say, oh my gosh, you have to have this person on. Like, this is a perfect guest. And we'd be like, okay, cool. Like we trust you and we have them on. And then they're just like, <laughs> stare at us the entire time. <laughs> And for those who weren't looking, I was given like a dead face, but or <laughs> who are listening right now. Um, and then Fabian and I were just like, well, we can't do that now and just take guest recommendations because you never know if these people have personalities. So, whew, yeah, it's it it's a learn you know lesson learned over time. Sure, we've it's it's been a really short amount of time for us, and a lot has evolved since you know yeah. since just like three weeks ago. So. <laughs> Oh, yeah. And and you figure out what works and what doesn't work. And, you know, if I can give you any ad- advice is like, you know, to use Jared's words is systematize a lot of, of what you can do, right? Like, let Calendly do the work of having to go back and forth on when people are going to be on, but have specific times where you know that that's going to work, right? And, and you don't really veer from that. Um, you know, if you write a really kick-ass email to somebody that works to, to get them on as a guest... That's your template. Boom. Yep. Save it in Gmail. Make sure that you send that. Um, but like do a second read through to make sure that it doesn't look weird or that you're using <laughs> somebody else's name or there's something kind of specific. Um, you know, do, doing things like that really helped having a show flow so that people were comfortable when they were coming on and saving that. And that's just part of your process. Right. And I'm reading a book right now called atomic habits and they talk about goals and without, you know, Goals without a system are essentially futile, right? So like having goals is great, but if you don't have a system to like keep you accountable for those goals, they're, they're, they're kind of pointless, right? So to, so to that point, like have a system of how you approach each guest in each episode and like that's going to help you get get further along. So like our Google drive is just full of these templates and these things that we know have worked um, that, that we can reuse just to one, to make it easier for us, but two, to really streamline that process, you know, uh, for, for the guest. And, and that was really one of the things that was one of the biggest compliments is we, we would oftentimes get feedback from guests, whether it was in person or as an email after the fact of just like, Hey, you guys were really professional in what you did. And part of that was the pre uh, show communication and the post show communication. And that stuff doesn't really take a lot of time as long as you've got a system and a process. And that's just kind of like plug and chug. So sorry if I lifted the curtain for anybody that was a guest, I thought I, I personally emailed you, uh, something nice. Um, I apologize for that, but you know, there's only so much time in a day, but keep all that stuff. Right. And, and continue to work on it. I know that we had had several meetings where we're like, we need to refresh this, you know, pre-show, um, show flow right? Like it's getting stale. Like, let's make sure that we're keeping up with how we adapt. Like let's adapt these, these programs and processes. Um, so I think that that goes uh, a long way. And then just 
you know, if you're not a spreadsheet guy, like learn to be and, <laughs> and like track things that are going on because that's, that's going to be important later. Right. Like it was a drag to have to go and create documents with a, over a hundred people and trying to put in first name, last name, email address, phone number, contact information. Right. Because we're scrambling to, to put on this party. And it's like, if we had had started that process and we're documenting all this stuff at, at ahead of time, we would have been a lot further along. Um, but you know, we had always taken this approach that this is a business, whether we knew it was going to turn into one or not. Like Jared had had a ton of experience running a business and he brought a lot of that to the table and kind of implemented some of that stuff. And it, it was kind of an unspoken thing of just like, we're going to take this to a different level of professionalism. Uh, and, and it showed and that, that really helped. If you guys don't have uh, tracking right now, I don't know if you guys are tracking through anything and like downloads and all that yeah. using Libsyn, like that was one of our critical, and I shouldn't say critical mistakes, but things that I'm kicking, kicking ourselves in the butt about. But yeah, it was six months in where we're like, oh wait, we're supposed to be tracking this? Mm -hmm. We lost, <laughs> we didn't get any data from our first 45 episodes, maybe 40 oh, wow. episodes. Um, so like our total download numbers are actually way higher than what we announced in that ep the last episode. Um, but it was one of those things where it's like, Oh, we didn't know we we're supposed to be tracking that. <laughs> that's yeah. painful. That that's the type of thing that just makes me like squirm because I'm, I'm I probably a bit too much. I kind of obsess over like how <laughs> things seem, seem to be trending early on. And it's still, you know, it's much too early for us to really have any usable data. But I'm trying to like, you know, I'm trying to look for patterns as, as quickly as I possibly can, you know, like what do we need to do release time wise or, or, you know, social media wise, I'm just looking for anything useful and not having I mean, that makes me. Ugh. It is very important, right? And if you're yeah. going to make anything into anything, I think having that to look back at is crucial, um, you know, to, to point back to the uh, mentor that Jared was talking about, he built his businesses on data, right? So it's just like, he knows the importance of it. And, and just like, you can start to track some of that stuff. So. Yeah. I'm uh, my, my constant war cry to Nick Hinton over yeah. here is long game, buddy, long <laughs> game. Uh, Cause he's, you know, he's obsessing about every single download and every, you know, all the analytics and stuff. Meanwhile, I can't think about any of that because I've got my nose in the thing. Like I'm doing the production, I'm editing it, I'm, I'm putting everything together. And Nick, meanwhile, is watching the numbers and he comes to me the other day. He's like, man, females in New York City, it seems to be a thing. Let's double down on that. I'm like, we, well, we have a small sample size here. It wasn't that big of an ad. Uh, let's, let's run some more tests before we, you know, <laughs> double, triple down on this thing. I'm like, long game, buddy. You know, we're, we're, we, we want to, I mean, kind of the same thing that you guys did. We want to build a platform, but specifically for creatives, creatives anywhere. We want to be able to uh, be able to be able to put somebody on, on, on blast and, you know, let everybody know about them. Meanwhile, kind of learning about the creative process, but at the same time, you know, data is important. I absolutely agree. But I mean, it, it's, it's good that we have a, a, a bit different roles here so that I don't have to think about that <laughs> stuff while I'm doing this. And I let him obsess about it. And every once in a while, I'm like, it's, oh, it's okay. It's okay. I, we're, I we're, do, we're doing good. We're, we're good boys. I do a lot of spinning myself in circles unnecessarily, <laughs> but I'm still thankful that uh, the balance of workload is dramatically uh, in my favor. Ryan's, Ryan's definitely shouldering way more of the burden than I am. Well, well I'm unemployed and I don't have any kids. So like, I should be <laughs> <laughs> taking the majority of the the workload here but until we can afford to to pay somebody to mix everything down and and that's what i really liked up. about your guys's podcast is you had a whole team of people that had those those tasks delegated um and it sounded like you pieced them together you added in what uh, was it haley you added her in in 2017 and then how many people was on your team when you guys concluded there was seven of us total seven yeah and what 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 are each of those roles? You uh, Haley was in like Haley marketing, was right? Host, Kay, oh, okay. Haley was uh, co-host marketing. Um, uh, Michelle was Patreon slash marketing with Haley. Um, Cole was a little bit more of the PR side and used some. Of, he works at um, G Beta. Is that not G Beta? Yeah. Is that right? 
uh, G beta Michelle worked at or does work at Lily. So she was, had a full-time job in marketing at Lily. Oh, wow. Um, and then Tim was our videographer. So that's where we have tons of video, uh, hours and hours. And then you have Jeff who, um, did, was our, is our audio, was our audio engineer. En- engineer essentially. And I mean, he, he was the only one that was, uh, paid for his time because he was actually producing a product week right. in week out with without Jeff like we you know Fabian would have had a lot more work to do <laughs> <laughs> a lot more yeah I, I feel for Ryan he's he's had to go through a lot to get us to even just to where we are right now and there's still so much work to be done <laughs> oh, that's okay I mean just like you mentioned you know systematizing everything like I I deal with that that kind of thing really well. If I have a list of steps, a list of clearly defined steps or something that operates on its own without me even thinking about it, I'm going to definitely lean in that direction. But uh, I remember from your podcast when you guys brought in, oh gosh, I'm terrible with names. Jeff, was it Jeff, your, your engineer? Mm-hmm. Yeah. When you brought in Jeff, uh, he basically sent you guys one of your episodes and he did a couple of things to the processing of it and just kind of boosted it up to industry standard. And I think he EQ'd a little bit and said, Hey, you guys, this is what, this is where it needs to be. And I think he just even sent them uh, uh, an image of it, just showed the waveform. Like, yeah. this is where you're at. This is where you need to be. Uh, what, what did your early, your early efforts, what kind of equipment were you running? Like what, what did those podcasts look like in terms of production? Um, so pretty quickly, we, we switched from the, the laptop to the Zoom H6, which is a workhorse. I love that thing. Um, I've, I've still used it recently. Uh, so we recorded everything because we were doing them in person uh, through the H6. And then I would edit everything in GarageBand just on, on my MacBook. So it was a pretty simple setup and did, I mean, did great work. But I mean, obviously there's there's audio standards for for podcasts like there's an actual industry standard for for where like the dbs need to be for what you're putting out and and jeff kind of knew all that because he's technically trained in it uh whereas i didn't and i was just going by you know kind of the same way that i played music was i didn't know how to do it but i was going to figure out a way to do it (laughs) Mm -hmm. um and you know after you know, just tinkering with it, you, you kind of get a process down, you build a template for where the episode's going to go. You slap your bumper on the front and the back. We don't do a lot of editing in the middle and boom, right? There's your episode. But, you know, it was fairly simple. So you recorded it directly on the H6, just on the microphones there, or did you use uh, external microphones from that? Yeah. So the, so we, so the H6 will have, has the capacity to hold six like inputs. We had four running through just like two on each side. So we had microphones, um, you know, little handheld microphones, um, dynamic mics. And then I would take the SD card from there and slap that into my computer, pull the audio off, and then just put it right in the garage band. Nice. Well, one of the struggles that we're having right now is really all we've got are condenser microphones. (laughs) And we didn't realize how problematic that would be because condenser microphones pick up everything. So, So when I'm editing, I really have to be really keen on that. And I have to chop out the the dead spaces for the different microphones because right now his microphone's picking up my voice really well and I can't um, I can't breathe too deeply or too close yeah it's a kind of <laughs> I have wheeze. to remember to lean in every yeah. single time yeah that that definitely helps so uh, that's probably going to be our next step is we're going to get some kind of dynamic microphones happening like I've got a couple that might work but I'd like to get something that's actually meant for podcasting like the Rode Pod mic looks pretty cool so dude um, we for two and a half years, we were rocking $20 Sure uh, SM58 knockoffs that we bought for 20 bucks on Amazon. And I would, okay. I, I still use those today when I record in person because they sound awesome. 20 nice. bucks. Nice. 20 bucks. Beautiful. Mm. It doesn't have to be complicated or expensive, does it? Uh, man, with me, <laughs> evidently it does. I don't know. Every time I get to thinking about it, I'm like, well... $3,500, we're, we're, we're set. It's just like, okay, that's a little much for something that's not making any money. So we I'll, send you, I'll send you, send me an email and I have a, a template, of course, email nice. that has all of that gear that we have. And I mean, they, they just dropped the price on the H6. So you could probably get everything that you need. Um, and I'll, I'll put in information 
for uh, an additional way to get like to house phone uh, conversations or like things like this nice. because that H6 doesn't come like with the capacity to run a, I forget what it's called, a bus or some shit like that, but to, to be able to do it to where you can hear the audio and they won't where mm. it'll create feedback. Uh, but anyway, you can get all that stuff probably for less than $600. Oh, nice. Yeah, man. Yeah. yeah I'll, I'll hit you up after the show. Thank you very much. That's that's yeah. cool of you to offer. Yeah, I sent the template last week to somebody who emailed me. It's like, that's Hey, I heard you guys are finishing up. Well, what did you guys use for your stuff? I was just like, went back to old email, copy paste. like, boom, this is what we use. <laughs> well, and for that matter, feel free to send us over any templates you yeah. want to. I'm, I'm more than sale. happy to. Yeah. That's for that. That's all for sale. Uh, <laughs> that, was good. that was part smart. of our French thing. See? Yeah. <laughs> Systems in process. Fair, fair. <laughs> I, I can't argue against that. I'll just have to <laughs> start stacking some paper. But we'll if see. you look back at the original email that we sent you, it's not too far from no. uh, what we sent you. So, <laughs> Copy and paste, baby. Yeah. It's, it's a little bit of clever tweaks. We're jacking it. That's free. Consider that free. You just got stole from. <laughs> Good, do it. I love it. So you guys started with a pretty bare bones operation with the H6 and these uh, cheap knockoff dynamic mics. Uh, what what did that evolve to? I can see you're on a sure SM7B right there. I've had my eye on that one, but uh, then like the whole preamp situation, all that stuff. So how did that move in, in into the area where you kind of are now? Um, so Jared's rocking a $60 mic and that was a current upgrade. Maybe it was less than that. Um, I paid for the seven B out of my own pocket, I believe maybe, maybe not. Um, but I was the only one to, to do it just because I was doing more voice work. Mm. Um, I think drink culture bought that. Okay. Potentially. And then we, we ended up buying like four really nice booms, like road booms that mm. we were going to put on tables that three of them are just sitting in a box right now. Uh, and then oh. we upgraded to the zoom L eight. We had purchased the roadcaster that the pro that, that really nice board that, that all in one board. But at the time you didn't have the ability to switch between wave and MP3, like you could on the H six. So when you were recording and you had four inputs, I mean, you're, you're talking like gigs and gigs and gigs to where you'd eat up an entire, you know, SD card. And then I'm trying to transfer those files, right. To go back to systematizing, I'm putting those on my computer that takes time, but then I'm putting those onto Google, which then that takes time, right. Just for those to get bounced down to MP3. Uh, whereas something like the zoom, you know, you have the option there, whether you want to record in wave or MP3. So a uh, long-winded way of telling you that I have a Zoom L8, one Shure SM7B, and then we still use those knockoff microphones from Amazon because they're awesome. Do you have a cloud lifter on the SM7B or is that just going straight into the Zoom? So for a long time, I didn't have the cloud lifter. And then I realized that I really had to bump my gain up. Mm -hmm. I was like, man, this microphone is too nice for me to have to turn this up so loud. So then you'd run into the problem that you have uh, with those dynamic mics is, or I'm, I'm sorry, those, uh, those mics that you have there where you're picking up a lot of, of external noise. Mm -hmm. So I, I just refused to pay that much money for a cloud lifter for a long time and, and then got it and realized that I didn't have to be so loud to get like really good audio. I have no idea what you guys just said. <laughs> That's all right. This what, is the what, part where I'm nerding out a little bit because, <laughs> like, I, I I feel like I have to ask the the elders. <laughs> what, all Jared what heard was like, beep, burp, burp, burp. I was <laughs> well, like, what about Q95? What's up? <laughs> What's great, though, is that in the finished product, uh, almost as punctuation to Fabian's point, a nice, loud truck just drove by outside of our oh, studio. Yeah. And that's definitely going to gonna be audible in the in the microphone but see stuff like that doesn't bother me that that to me that's kind of like ambient sounds yeah like, that's, that's not too provides much. texture but um uh in the place where we're at we're at prospect e studio in fountain square on prospect oh, and yeah. uh it's my buddy's like uh rehearsal space that he just started letting us use for for podcasting and he treated all the walls, but he didn't treat the ceiling so well. So when his roommate's listening to podcasts upstairs, like we can hear it through <laughs> the microphone. And that's something that I can't really do anything about, you know? So, um, so we have to ask him, Hey, can you keep it down just a little bit? We're just, we're, you know, but, um, 
I think dynamic mics, I can definitely see why people go that route with podcasting and, um, and Jared, you were showing off your mic a second ago. Can I, can I, can I see what that is? You were, you were little on the screen there. What, what type of microphone is that? Audio Technica. Okay. $60 yeah, mic. I have no idea. Fa Fabian bought it. Um, it's got a when, nice blue light. Yeah, when I got quarantine that sick hit, Michael, ba Michael Bay lens flare. <laughs> yeah. When quarantine hit, we realized we we're going to be doing a lot of Zoom calls um, and what needed some quality audio. So Fabian bought these for myself and Haley so we can run some some episodes on Zoom. And it's been successful. It works. It's, it's a lot. I think Fabian can actually call out when I'm on this versus my uh, laptop speakers. Can't your ears tell the difference? Yes, of course. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're getting pretty close to uh, having to wrap up here. Um, yeah, Fabian's I, got a heart out. We need to yeah, uh, let yeah, him get you know, into a pumpkin at 730. <laughs> We're knocking on the door. So um, I've got a kind of two part question for both of you, if you don't mind. Um, just big picture type thing. What are some big key takeaways that you've learned in your type time of podcasting? And what are some big mistakes that you guys have made? Like things that you look back on, you're like, God, I wish we'd didn't do that we should have done this instead um so I'll, I'll start and i'll start with a big mistake um merchandise pre-orders only um mm. don't just buy a bunch of <laughs> jared smiling <laughs> because i think he's he's wised up maybe he learned from our mistakes for for naptown but uh if you're going to sell merchandise pre-sell it um because otherwise you end up with a bunch of random sizes and a bunch of knickknacks that have your, you know, podcast name on it that, that never gets sold because people find interest. Um, so pre-sell it. And we, we did that a number of times and probably wasted a few thousand dollars uh, in, in the course of doing that. So just have, would have been smarter with our marketing spend for, for apparel and would have used that to, to really you know, either pay somebody that really knew what they were doing with Facebook or, or Instagram advertising and, and spend it that way. Uh, but you know, I, I wouldn't have spent as much money as I would have, or as we did on, on apparel. Um, and, and big takeaways, just the, the importance of, of conversation and, uh, knowing how important it is to, to facilitate a conversation and, uh, knowing that listening is the biggest part of that, because that's what, is going to allow you to, you know, take conversations in really weird directions. And that's, what's going to make your show stand out. It, you know, anybody can ask anybody, uh, uh, just a random question. Right. But I, I think where the interesting thing comes in is how the host listens to the conversation and the things that they pick up on and, and really just be genuinely interested in what they're saying. And if something sparks your curiosity, like go down that road, man, it's your show. You can do whatever the hell you want. Right. So right. if somebody right. mentions, some little offhand comment and you're just like, huh, that was weird. Like, don't be afraid to stop the conversation and dive into that or bring it back up, but just kind of like remind yourself of where you left off so that he can get back to, to where it was. But, um, you know, I, I think that that's where we ended up with some really cool, uh, cool episodes sometimes is just taking those weird roads with, with people and not being afraid to do it. Well, now I have regrets about not digging into military school. <laughs> I had that same thought too. I was like, oh, military school. My ear perked up. I'm like, okay. I also have regrets about uh, getting the, the Forging Flame episodes one through six CD box set. I've got cases and cases <laughs> sitting in my garage, and I really could have heeded that uh, t shirt advice. I do actually still have about 500 CDs from my old band, Dead Birds of Doris. <laughs> I think I've got a couple dozen of them. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> I don't know what else to do with them anymore. So. <laughs> Rebrand them as coasters. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> really weird Frisbees. No, that was yeah. solid, man. Thank you for that. That was, yeah, that was good. Excellent. What about you, Jared? Uh, I was like, I got to follow that up. Um, <laughs> I would say I'll start with mistakes. So two of them, one being uh, DRNK, CLTR, drink culture <laughs> without balls. Um, Fabian was stuck on it because that was what was in his brain. Uh, it looked cool from a branding perspective, but it turned into a five minute conversation to understand what that was actually drink culture um, and had to explain that to people about why there weren't vowels. And then we would finally explain what drink culture was and how it was a double entendre and how we're having conversations while drinking uh, about drinking in the culture. 
Um, so like that whole conversation took five minutes to pitch somebody and an elevator pitch can't be five minutes long. Mm. Um, and I think I tried to, to bang Fabian's head against a brick wall for <laughs> a couple months that we needed to change that. And, uh, it wasn't until a couple months later that he finally said, okay, cool, let's change this to actually typing out drink culture. And once we did that, that problem left and we didn't have to deal with that anymore. Um, so that was one, I think another, I wouldn't call it a mis- Maybe it was a mistake. Maybe it was a missed opportunity, but, uh, I think our lack of committing to building our Patreon community, um, was also a missed opportunity. I, I don't want to call it necessarily a mistake, but people were paying us money to do this podcast. And whether it was a dollar, $3, $10, $20, $30, uh, we were making a couple hundred dollars a month on Patreon wow. um, and with very little content. And if we would have bought into that a little bit more and kind of bought in a little bit more to the community side of Patreon, and, I, and I'm 100% guilty of not putting any effort into that. Um, so I'm not saying like it's anyone's fault by any means. Um, I think that was something that could have been better that might have allowed us to get this to another level Uh at that point mm-hmm. um because i mean there's podcasts out there there's creatives out there making uh, 30 40 50 thousand dollars a month Oof. off of patreon yeah it was um a- you know you look up patreon records and patreon businesses and it's it's nuts um so that was one uh, one of the biggest takeaways and this is something i'm learning in life this is something i'm learning as a, a leader of a, a decently sized business here in Indianapolis with Naptown Fitness, but is transparency into vulnerability into radical candor. And those three words to me are kind of similar sure. in in relation to each other. Um, but just telling people and making sure people understand that like, this is your first time running a business. This is your first time being a leader. This is your first time making a decision in one direction or another. So like, I don't know if this is right. I'm learning as well. So learn with me, make me better, give me candid feedback, radical candor in the moment. And don't just try to bring me down and tell me I suck. Let's do this together and make this better together. And I think that's one big takeaway I could say from drink culture. I could say from Naptown fitness. I can say with my wife and I as a human being is just being open to honest communication and feedback. Um, And then also having that same empathy towards someone else. And that's probably one of my biggest takeaways from drink culture and the people we talk to. And for me personally, just from observing you guys and, and here speaking with you tonight, that's kind of my my biggest impression that I'm left with as well is, is the way that you guys have discussed some of the conversations that you've had. Not everyone's going to have the ability to, to be that candid, you know, and that's critical. So yeah. luckily, I think Ryan and I have a, have a pretty, pretty open – uh, you know, pretty open relationship in terms of our ability to communicate, you know, things that might be, you know, contrary to one another. Or, you know, we don't really have too much friction. I don't feel like when we have a difference of opinion. So, yeah. and we definitely I, lean into that, that yeah. I like that term, that radical candor. Hell yes. Um, that was, that was also, we, we definitely lead into that because we really don't know what we're doing and, you know, <laughs> we, and we don't want to, you know, bullshit anybody, but we're just going for it. I do. Hopefully, no, okay. <laughs> I really don't have any CDs of our episodes. Okay. <laughs> uh, if you've never heard of Radical Candor, d- read the book, download Audible. Uh, there's a whole, there's a whole, um, not I guess philosophy or whole movement. Uh, yeah, so, movement. There you go. Sure. Yeah, off of the off the term Radical Candor it comes from a former Google exec. I think it was Google. Um, she created the book and the whole movement of Radical Candor. Candor and it's phenomenal it's done it's transformed our business at naptown which has been great excellent radical candor and the other one you mentioned that was uh essentialism right essentialism yep. yeah i'm gonna have to check out both of those man i'm, I'm big into Do books it. like that too so yeah well i i guess that's a that's a good segue into tapering to a close here uh if if i could i'd love to to ask and i'm sure ryan's gonna agree wholeheartedly but could we get a little bit of radical candor from you guys how how did we do <laughs> I think you guys did great. Um, you know, you, you, um, you kind of let us pontificate on on some things, which I think is always important is just, uh, let your guests go. Right. And they'll tell you when they're done, right. They'll just stop talking. So, 
Mm. You guys <laughs> listening? So that's good. <laughs> good. Excellent. Yeah, I'm I'm an active listener. I'm a. Um, you probably notice this through many of episodes on drink culture, but Fabian leads the conversation. Mm -hmm. So be okay with one person being the alpha <laughs> of co-hosting. But with that being said, Ryan, I would recommend take notes. Um, and that's one mm -hmm. thing that we always did. I did personally was I was always taking notes because there'd be one small little question that I would like to ask that would be very detailed. And as soon as Fabian goes off on one of, his, one of his tangents or one of his multiple questions or whatever, I would lose that. But if I took a note and circled it, I would always know to come back to that. And to that same point, you don't want dead silence to where you stare at each other, look at each other, and guess has nothing to say. You don't know what your next question is. If you're taking notes, you can always know what your next question is because you're circling it. And you know, like as soon as there's dead air, you can go straight to that question and be like, oh, I wanted to ask this, which might pull you in a different direction, but could be good too. So... Um, I think Fabian hit on it already, but for both of you, just be a little, be, be as active in listening as possible um, in order to be prepared for the next segment, I guess I would say. Mm, okay. That's solid feedback. We'll definitely immediately implement some, uh, <laughs> some note taking and some, some further preparedness, but I definitely um, need the note taking. Oh, hell yeah, I do hit walls a lot. And like when a person's finished talking, I don't know always how to segue into the next thing. So I am just kind of left there staring at them and that makes everyone uncomfortable. Next. <laughs> nice. Yeah, nice. That's... I took notes. I took notes and I was a guest tonight. So <laughs> <laughs> doing half our work for us jared thanks nice well all right um before we we let you guys go here um since the bulk of of our listenership thus far has been indianapolis and central indiana focused uh jared people can can check out what you've got going on at, at naptown fitness any anything else that you've got to plug other than just being uh, a dad uh, you can follow me on Instagram at J a Bisco. Um, that's where I post about my family and my personal life. You no can one knows how to spell that. J <laughs> J a B Y C Z K O. Um, good point, Fabian. Uh, you can follow me on Facebook. That's where I post a lot about business and health and fitness and, and Indianapolis and the world. Um, and then, yeah, naptownfitness.com is my main business. That's what I do for a daily basis. We're actually, um, working with Kodo Designs to go through a complete rebrand of our entire business and our business structure of all of our smaller entities. Um, we purchased the 3902, the old Happy Brewing building across the street from Butler Tarkington. Nice. Um, we're turning the front half of that into a coffee shop and the back half into Naptown Fitness. And we're really excited to be an extension of that community um, of the Butler Tarkington area on 38th Street Corridor over there. Um, so that's a huge project we're working on right now as well on top of everything else. So, uh, every, every day is busy. Um, and it, you know, if you want to get involved, let me know. Awesome. All right. And if I were taking notes, I'd have nailed this, but Fabian, you've got culture, creative, culture, collaborative media. So that's kind of just on a, um, a word of mouth basis right now. Just, I, I'm slowly building my team to be able to scale, but almost at capacity for the work that I can take on. So, um, nice. yeah, I, I mean, you can always reach out to me on, on Instagram at Fabian time, but you know, if I can ask your listeners to do anything is go back, listen to all those drink culture podcast episodes that we poured our heart and time and sweat into, uh, that's what they're there for. And, um, if you like the drink culture podcast, just kind of stay you know, pay, pay attention to, to our social media pages. I'm working on a brand new show right now uh, that I think is going to be really fun and um, have a meeting tomorrow to talk about another show. So there's definitely going to be more, more content out there. Yeah, Jared, there you go. Um, <laughs> there, there's going to be more content. Uh, if, if you liked um, some of the stuff that we did, just, just keep paying attention. Um, you know, I'm, I'm definitely not going away. It, it's more of just like a, a different show that that, awesome. that will replace that and more than anything um follow my cats on instagram <laughs> at the real waffle kitty at the real waffle kitty uh, they, they put out amazing content they're beautiful they're fluffy they're white they're they awesome Persian they're cats. cats so follow them um yeah man thank you for having us on the yeah, show of course thank you, thank you guys we really appreciate you taking the time with us and uh and hopefully we've we've collected some valuable insights that not only might help out young podcasters such as us, but, uh, you know, entrepreneurs, artists, whomever might see a parallel in, in their own experience and your own. So Absolutely. thanks guys. 
Thank you guys. You got it. Appreciate Absolutely. it, gentlemen. Thank you. Right. Have a great night. Yeah, you, you too. too. See ya. Bye. Bye.